Tricking the human brain is actually quite an easy thing to do. There's a brilliant video by Vsauce, aka Michael Stevens, illustrating just this, called this is not yellow. When you're on your computer, tablet, whatever sort of screen it may be, and you see the color yellow, you are not in fact actually seeing yellow light. What you're actually seeing is a mix of red, green, and blue light. The only colors that a screen is actually capable of displaying. Your brain interprets this mix of color as being yellow, when in fact, there is no yellow light. And that is what is happening here. These glasses are essentially tricking the brain, fixing color blindness. So it is possible to see something that isn't actually there. Everything we perceive passes through a filter that is our brain, our consciousness. Something that we know very little about. Photons, elementary particles that make up light, are waves and particles at the same time and have been known to act as both of these things. But when we try to observe this wave-particle duality, the photon either acts as a wave or as a particle, never as both. It is forced to act as one or the other. So simply observing something can change the way it fundamentally works, even though in reality it exists in a different state. So what is reality? And is it even possible for us to fully experience it? Let me sort of, kind of, but not really explain. Okay, so we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here. My name is Vinny, welcome to YouTube Explained. And today we're gonna to be looking at colorblind man sees purple for the first time. And actually we're gonna be able to talk to the star of this video, which is a first for YouTube Explained, so. Yeah! Be sure to check the description down below for the full interview with Ethan Zachary Scott and all of the sources and videos that I mention in this video. Hi everybody, how's it going? My name's Vinny and I'm here with Ethan. Hello! Do you know, I mean I assume you know, how it, how colorblindness works and how like, yes. you know. So can you tell me a little bit how, about, about, oh, can you tell me a little bit about how it works and then how the glasses work? Sure. So in your eyeball, you have uh, things called cones, and you have one for red light, one for green light, and one for blue light. And when you see something that, I'm like, I need a graph. Essentially, <laughs> your brain needs to isolate each of those signals individually. So it's blue, green, and red. In someone who has red, green color blindness like myself, the red and green fields of color are mostly overlapped. So my brain can't tell the difference between them. And it doesn't mean that this looks red to me, it just means that like, if something is green, it kind of looks yellowish or vice versa. If something is pink or red, it kind of, I can't really tell the difference between it. Uh, blue and purple look exactly the same to me. I cannot tell the difference of it without the glasses. Mm. The way in chroma glasses work are, they filter out a small section of the red and green overlapping light. So then my brain can go, oh wait, these are two different signals, and this is very clearly red, and this is very clearly green. And then therefore I can see purple, because there's hints of red in it. And it can figure that out. Does that make any sense? <laughs> um, I'm sure when I rewatch it and I, and I add information on screen, I'll understand. But right now I'm just like... Okay, it's magic. <laughs> it's magic, it's, essentially. It's basically, it's magic, guys. That's how the glasses work. Science yeah. is magic. Science is magic. Very interesting stuff. I really enjoyed talking to Ethan, and I was actually able to draw a lot of parallels with myself. Super fans will know that I cannot smell. I do not have a sense of smell. Or, I kind of do. Kind of like how Ethan does see some colors, I can smell if I really make an effort and if it's right up against my nose I can kind of smell things but I can't really tell the difference between other smells I'll just be like oh yeah smells both Ethan and myself are missing out on a part of the human experience well he's not because he got glasses <laughs> whatever but it's okay because we both have awesome eyebrows so totally makes up for it so all of this actually pretty much more or less makes sense this is cold hard science we can observe this and we can manipulate it in order to suit our needs we were able to bring color back to people's eyes which is incredible or to their perception i should say not their actual eyes they had color 
in their eyes, whatever. But according to Dr. Robert Lanza, science is looking at the world in a completely wrong way. You see, Dr. Robert Lanza in 2007 proposed a concept called biocentrism. Now, biocentrism is a lot to swallow, so I'm just gonna give you a brief rundown of what it is. In short, it's a concept that puts life at the center of everything, at the center of the universe. All life is equal, and not only is all life equal, but life itself created the universe, and not the other way around. Dr. Robert Lanza states that life is not a byproduct of the universe, but the other way around. Life is essential for the universe to exist. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does the tree make a sound at all? According to Lanza, no. The tree does not make a sound. That sound is the byproduct of our consciousness, and so is space and time. Space and time are not actual physical objects that we should be observing. They are human. They are of human perception. They are a byproduct of our consciousness. Scientists are looking at the universe from a wrong angle. They should be putting biology at the center of their occupation. Well, at least that's the theory. The theory is fleshed out in his book and uses quantum physics as a basis and is explained better than I ever could. So um, I'm not going to go into any more detail. If you guys want to know more, you can Google search it or read his book. Life as we know it is just that. Life as we know it. Collectively, as a species, well, minus our individual defects, have a universal perception of the universe. We have a certain way that we view it. We have our own definitions of what is real, of what the world around us is like. Our definition of reality will differ from other forms of life. An extraterrestrial could pop up one day on our planet and perceive things in a completely different way. I wonder that if we ever do encounter alien life, will it even be possible to communicate with this other being or to even get along with this other being if he perceives the world in a completely different way and perceives us as a threat or as something to be taken care of, swept under the carpet. Anyway, to understand the world around us, shouldn't we first understand the way we perceive the universe? and how that can affect the very thing we are trying to observe. I just think that to understand the world around us, we need to first understand us. Which is easier said than done, I admit. I find biocentrism fascinating, and I definitely want to bring it up in future videos after I've read more on the subject. But for the time being, I'm going to take an existential view on things and say, What's the point? We're never gonna find out what life is about. Let's go and get fucked. My name is Vinny, and thank you for perceiving me through the filter of your consciousness. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, then go ahead and leave a like, maybe comment, suggestions for future episodes. There's also a YouTube Explained subreddit, and also a Patreon page if you want to support the show. I record these every single Wednesday, mostly, so if you enjoyed it, then uh, go ahead and subscribe. I promise there is more coming, although I can't promise you'll enjoy them. That's not a promise I can make, but they will be there, so yeah. Thank you so much. I, I like you. See, this is like intimate time right here at the end of the video. You guys, you know, only the super fans are listening to me right now. If you're a super fan, I love you. I think, I think we should run away together. How does that sound? Leave a comment. Bye.